Today we're talking chronographs, one of the most traditional complications in all of watchmaking. We're going to look at the design, the execution, and of course, how they integrate with everyday life. Let's get into it. Sabrina, thank you very much for joining me today. How are you? Hi, Justin. I'm fine. We have, we have to start from the, the beginning now. How did you get into watchmaking at the start? Well, I started my apprenticeship in 2006 and I did the internship and I was from the beginning totally in love with this um, profession. I loved the, the movements, the working on the small, small parts and it just fascinating to me until today. Brilliant. That's so cool to hear. And how many different variations of chronograph do we have here at RWC? Uh, you can say we have three. Yeah, we have the, the basic one, we have the double chronograph, and we have the flyback chronograph. And just give us an idea of how those different chronographs function in reality. So as an owner, how would they work differently? Yeah, you have the normal basic chronograph. This uh, can time one single event. For example, you can time a lap of one runner. And then you have the double chronograph, which allows you to time two or more events. For example, the laps of two or three runners. And the flyback chronograph um, is special because this one starts immediately again without a delay when you reset to zero. What does the process look like for you as a watchmaker to work on those three chronographs? Well, I think the the biggest challenge is because the chronograph is a separate gear train, which interacts with your normal power train. And this interaction costs you always extra power. And as a watchmaker, you have to constantly to adjust the settings to keep this loss of power at a minimum. And technically, and I'm not a watchmaker by any means, there must be a, a, an increase in complexity, you know, as you go through each of those chronographs. Yeah. Um, if you see the standard chronograph, the basic movement, um, for the normal chronograph, there is a module on top of it for the double chronograph. This module was, by the way, um, entirely designed and developed in IWC. And this is a module on the basic chronograph caliber. And you can see it from the outside, the double chronograph, because it has a third pusher on the case. And the flyback chronograph is entirely different. You cannot compare it with the other one. So Sabrina, I have to ask, do you have a favorite chronograph? Yeah, I have several, but uh, my absolute favorite is this one. It's a GST double chronograph, uh, reference 3715, and its case and bracelet are made of stainless steel and it's a real gem. Even if it's a larger model, I wear it almost every day, uh, especially in summer. Well, look, thank you so much for your time today. It's been, it's been great. Thank you, it was a pleasure. So folks, there you have it. The ins and outs of the chronograph function. We hope that understanding a little bit more about the three variations here at IWC is going to make your next decision just that little bit easier.